Welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 and this, my new favorite car in this game. This is the Mercedes AMG Hammer Wagon, and I made a whole video about it yesterday. If you missed that video, I'll link to it in the description down below. But in that video, I promised you guys that today we would jump back into Forza Horizon 5 and check out the two remaining cars, the Bentley Continental GT Convertible and the Jaguar XE Project A. Golden actually says the Bentley is pretty good in A class. He says S1 is for memes only. Oh no. As per usual, this wouldn't be an AR12 video without any fun facts about the big bad Bentley Continental GT convertible. Let, let's be honest, it is a bit of a big boy. This is actually the world's fastest four-seater convertible. With this W12 engine, it can do over 200. And even though it is a big boaty boy, it can do zero to 60 in less than four seconds. Corners are a bit of a problem though, if I'm honest. Uh, Yes. If you want to buy one of these things today, it'll cost you around 200,000 pounds. I've spoken about this before in videos, but sports cars never really devalue too much. Luxury cars devalue faster than dodgy made submarines. Because Bentley's been making the Bentley Continental for what feels like around 237 years, you could get a car that the average person looks identical to this one. And here in Canadian dollars, for $36,000. It's unbelievable how quickly these cars fall off a cliff in terms of value. To be fair, yes, you would need to spend $36,000 on it. And then probably another 36,000 to actually, you know, be able to get it to run for more than five minutes. But you could get a banging car for a budget price. Why don't we just throw all the rules away from Bentley and turn it into a racing car? Why can I swap that in? Two Jay-Z doobie like that? 7.7 .7 liter V12? No, 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 no. Wait, what is that? Wait, what? that's from the 2017 Continental GT Speed W12? I didn't know that. That's essentially the same engine that we've got now, just with a bit extra horsepower and a lot more torque, actually. Why don't we start with a realistic build? We'll start with the W12, and then we'll come back and we'll do memes. <laughs> Why don't we recreate Jeremy Clarkson's Bentley from the Grand Tour? No shot! Bentley's got customization! This is... I was not, not expecting this. Could we give it the upgraded exhaust? Oh. And the side skirt? Wow. I guess we'll go for some big, chunky off-roading tires. Something, something. Would have preferred a little bit more. I need some rally suspension. Okay, this is actually... This is looking pretty cool. A thousand two hundred pounds of weight reduction. Change of plans. We are now going middle of S1 class. We've got 800 horsepower in our Bentley. 3,800 pounds. It's the worst quality photo I've ever seen. But I think our color's not bad. Bentley Continental MFBC. Oh, gears. Oh, gears. Oh, I should have. Ah. I really should have put a six-speed gearbox in this thing instead of this stupid eight speed. I can see now why Golden said the S1 version was a bit of a handful. It's a bit of a death trap, bro. This one only has 800 horsepower. How goddamn undrivable is this thing gonna be with nearly 2,000 horsepower? What? Oh, for God's sake! Chat, I might have built a shit box. If there is one positive, I might be basically in last, but at least I look quite cool. I think this is one of the worst cars I've ever made. I tried to build an MFBC and all I got was accident. I've done a corner and I haven't died. Very good. Oh, we're gonna overtake somebody. That's not what I meant! This car is a death trap on wheels! Golden, I should have listened to you. That didn't go that well. If you thought that went badly, th this is gonna go really, really, really badly. If you've ever wanted to see a, a vehicle speed run crashing, you have come to the right place. Let's make some predictions. How long will it take me before I hit a wall? I'm thinking max 27 seconds. Oh my god. Whoa. whoa. Wait, it turns? Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was not expecting turning quite like that. Break in. Oh. 
What? I didn't touch. I didn't touch. I didn't touch. It was a tap. That was 26 seconds, though. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> there it is. There it is. How the hell are physics doing physics things with this? How the hell have I taken a corner and I've not ended up in the stratosphere having the world's biggest crash? No, no, no. I think what I'm realizing about this car, it works really, really well right up until the moment it doesn't. I'm running full arrow on this thing. I tried to make it as good as I could by some miracle. It is kind of working. I did not think the off-road version would be more undrivable than the 1,800 horsepower version. 215 miles an hour on the brakes. Turn it in. Little bit of understeer there. You, do, you definitely need to wait a little bit for it to turn. Bentley Continental. What a car. Before we move on to the Jag, though, we need to finish this Bentley up with a bit of a drift build. Am I really going to run with 1,800 horsepower? The only reason you guys watch my videos is because you like watching my skill issues and watching a man in pain. Imagine... <laughs> Imagine turning up to a real-life drift event where people can just drift whatever cars they want and imagine seeing a Bentley Continental rock up and then actually start going sideways. That would be incredible. I would pay so much money to witness a Bentley go drifting. <laughs> Again, by some miracle, it's working and it's working well. What? Nice. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Big angle Bentley. Big boy. Come on. Send it. Send it. Yes. Yes. No. No. I need more speed going into there if I'm going to hold that. Ah, so close. The Bentley is so such a machine. Now that we've driven the Bentley, do we think it's a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or somewhere in the middle? For me personally, I've never really been the biggest fan of Bentleys. So the car is mid. But that car just changed color. It has 10 on 10 customization. The game can turn a boring car good by giving me 1,800 horsepower. And it has done that beautifully with the MFB. Massive thumbs up. We gotta head back to the festival and jump in to our final car. This is the Jaguar XE SV Project 8. We need to get it out of our system. The Jag. 600 horsepower, 500 foot-pounds of torque. No way, they even give you the option to actually take the vinyls off. That's pretty cool. Before we jump into the fun fact, we need to do a little bit of a sound test. I haven't even revved it yet, and I already like it. good sounding car in this game. Well done. The Jaguar XE fun fact. So what exactly is SV? Back in the day when Ford owned Jag and Land Rover, they were the ones to launch SVO to like kickstart the SVO racing program. Ford actually launched it in North America doing like IMSA stuff where they built like Ford Mustangs. That's where the Ford Mustang SVO got its name. In Australia, the SVO team was building Ford Falcon SVO. When Ford eventually sold Jag and Land Rover off, Ford needed a new name for their like high performance cars. And that's where SVT came in. So if you've ever seen like the SVT Gen 1 Ford Raptor, that's where those got their name. Jag eventually got to use their own SVO name on one of their cars in 2015. Eventually, they came out with this thing in 2019, the XE SVO, or well, SV. They, they ditched the O. The O's actually on the bonnet with the circle. They only made 300 of these things for the entire world. They are super rare, and I love them. I do think Jag got a little bit confused by this thing, because 
let me show you. We've got this big carbon fiber rear wing. We've got this like built into the body wide body. We've got all of these carbon fibery bits on the bottom and along the side. All of these holes on the front are for aero. Behind there, you've got like radiators and intercoolers and all sorts of stuff like that. Jag went in and built a proper race car for some reason. Oh, it's a bit difficult to see. They decided to leave the back seats in there. They went out with the intention of building like the ultimate Jag race car and then was like, what if you want to take your family racing. <laughs> I love the S-type. I love this thing. So cool. We could always do it ourselves and turn this into the ultimate Jag race car and remove the rear seats and fill it up with a bunch of scaffolding. Well, let's see. What engine swaps do we have? Audi R8 V10, V12, racing V12. Wait, is that the... That's the... That's the thing. It's the TVR engine. Thank you. I think, honestly, this engine is so good already. I don't want to customize it. I don't, or I don't want to swap the engine just yet. Top of S1 class and give it a go. Who the hell would want to remove that? Wait, I didn't know you could put a normal rear wing on it or no rear wing. We don't need to run ugly Forza Aero because the stock rear wing is adjustable. Bone stock, we have slick racing tires. I guess we're going to want the extra grip. So let's go full racing or full slick tires. And we're going to make our rear tires even thicker. 350. We also have some engine spacers. Very nice. I'm already on race suspension. I can go and do the drift suspension. Give it some anti-roll bars. Fill the back seat up with scaffolding. And weight reduction. Very nice. 730 horsepower. Super lightweight now. I don't know if it's just me. But every single time I see this car... I love it. It's my car. Hello, me. But I absolutely love all of the holes that I, I know they're not, but drilled into the front bumper. I find it such a cool look. I'm honestly surprised they only made 300 of these because it's such a cool car. I guarantee you in today's world, Jag could sell these, no problem. The average person has never heard of a Project 8 before. And I think the average person would look at this car and go, why did you put a tiny little rear wing on it? And why is there an obnoxiously large logo on the side of it? Maybe that's just me as well, but oh, incredible. Do we really need to try a golden tune? I guess we will try a golden tune. WRC V12 Project 8. Golden is running a thousand horsepower, rally suspension, off-road tires, all-wheel drive. This thing is kind of like a British Dodge Hellcat. Essentially, what Jag did with this thing is take, like, a regular everyday car, like a Challenger or a Charger or whatever, and then give it the biggest engine that they've got in the fleet. It's got a ridiculous amount of horsepower. Obviously, for this thing, like, Dodge focused on, like, drag racing with the Hellcat. Jag just focused on track racing instead. It is kind of... Oh, goodbye, other Project A. It is kind of like a Jag... Hellcat. Anyways, let's see how good Golden's tune is. I mean, we're already up to first place and we've not even completed the first lap. It's just a nice little off-roader. There's no way this car is going to be OP for anything in this game. Might be one of my favorite sedans. I'm not usually a big fan of sedan. This thing might be up there. Is there a sedan that I like more than this thing? I like the Audi RS5 Sportback. That's got four doors. I don't know if it's technically like a sedan, maybe. Oh, CT4 V Blackwing. Yes, yes, that's a good one. But I think in terms of cool factor, I think this is cooler. The only sedan that might get close to this, what about that Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglioli Olioli GTA car? I think that might be the only competition for this car. I think I just hold the Project 8 to a really high standard and to knock it off that pedestal would be very difficult. I think that Alpha is the only thing that comes anywhere near it. This is the Alfa Romeo GTA M. If I'm going drifting, I'm going to do things properly. We're going to go rear wheel drive. We're going to keep the stock engine in it. We're going to keep all the cool arrowy bits on it. We're going to give it some, I guess, drift tires. We're gonna, uh, we'll, we'll do this legit. The Project 8 has restrictor plate? Why does the Project 8 have restrictor plate. If I remove the restrictor plate, I get 933. 
And if I remove all the restrictors, I have 961. Is that some Volkswagen emission scandal, but Jag edition? Fourth gear and into the corner, baby. Let's go. Let's slide all the way through. This is going to be such a chill little drift car. I love this thing. How does a 360 sound? Can we? 360? In the middle of a drift zone. It wasn't the cleanest. I didn't have much room to work with, but we did it. Snap it. Oh, no. We're going to be close to the wall. Held, held, held. Yes, sir, baby. Bro, we're going to get a three-star score after going for two 360s. I do like this thing. It's such a nice car to drive, for real. It's just, it's so well put together. I love this thing. Is this a thumbs up or is it a thumbs up? It's a stupid question. It's a thumbs up. Now that we've driven all of the cars, though, what do we think of the Euro car pack? We get one of my favorite cars of all time, the AMG Hammer Wagon. We get a beautiful Jag. The Bentley is really fun to drive around in. And the Pininfarina, although not as fast as I would really like, a very cool car with a very cool story. Definitely a solid car pack would recommend.